In this video, we are going to look at the different conformations of the propane molecule. Let's start with just a little reminder. Conformations are is just another way of saying shapes. So we're looking at the different shapes of the propane molecule. We're not talking about constitutional isomers. We're talking about the propane molecule freely rotating and twisting into different shapes without becoming a different molecule. Propane is a three carbon alkane. Its condensed structure is CH3, CH2, CH3. So this will be a little bit trickier than the conformations of ethane, which is what we looked at in the last two videos. Hopefully you still have your model kit handy and I'm going to walk you through the process of building a propane model. So I want you to start by taking two carbon atoms of your model and connecting them with each other. We're just gonna start with two carbon atoms in this particular orientation. So one on the left and one on the right. And then I want you to, um, you're probably gonna need to manipulate this bond a little bit to get the carbon atoms lined up just right. I want you to add a hydrogen atom to your carbon on the left. And again, I want you to kind of twist it a bit so that the hydrogen, carbon, and carbon are all flat, parallel. You could set them down on your table and they would all lay flat on the table. So we want them to be all flat and parallel to your table. And then I want you to add your third carbon in this position right here. So now you have four atoms, hydrogen and three carbon atoms, and I want you to just kind of twist it and shape it so that all four of these atoms can lay down flat on the table. Now that you have it, once you have it twisted it in that particular position, I want you to make sure that you don't twist this bond anymore. Make sure that this bond holds still. I want you to fill in the two hydrogens on the first two carbons that you worked with. When you fill them in, when you add these two hydrogens to your model, on the left-hand carbon, you're gonna have both of your hydrogens pointing towards you or down. One of them will be sticking up and the other one will be sticking down into the table. So you won't be able to lay this flat anymore. And on your second carbon, carbon number two, the hydrogens will be up away from you. One of them will be sticking up away from the table and one will be sticking down as well. And then I want you to fill in three more hydrogens on this last, the third carbon atom. And the direction, the orientation of the three hydrogens that you add to this carbon is not gonna matter. It's only gonna matter on these two carbons right here. So I'm just gonna write H3 like that and you can just plug those three hydrogens in and they can be pointing in any direction it doesn't make a difference. So once you get this model built we are now going to turn it into a Newman projection and to turn it into a Newman projection we are going to cite from the left to the right and we're going to be citing down this bond right here so we're going to be standing here looking at the molecule in this way. And when we cite down this bond, we're only gonna focus on these two carbons. Whenever you're drawing a Newman projection, you can only focus on two of the carbons in the molecule. Of course, we're gonna draw this third carbon. It's, it is part of the molecule, but the basic structure of the Newman projection, the two carbons that are featured in the Newman projection, they are represented by the two carbons that we are looking at when we are citing from the side. So let's, let me take, uh, take you over to mole view and we are going to look at this molecule in the uh, three-dimensional representation in mole view. So this should resemble the model that you built with um, your hydrogen and three carbons all in the same plane and the green here representing the hydrogen atom. So I'm just kind of twisting it a little bit. Now remember with your CH3, your hydrogens could be pointing in any direction because I told you that it didn't matter which way they were pointing. So what I want you to do is turn your model like this, the way that I'm turning it, so that you're citing down those two carbon atoms that we're gonna focus on when we draw the Newman projection. And when you have it lined up perfectly, this is what you should see. The two hydrogen atom or carbon atoms, number one and number two, are gonna be stacked right on top of each other. We can see the five hydrogen atoms that are attached to those first two carbons and then we can also see the ch3 group down at the bottom so what we're going to do is draw this in our notes 
draw what we're seeing. Here is the front carbon, which we're representing as a dot, this carbon right here. And this carbon has one hydrogen sticking up. That's this guy right here. And it has two hydrogens sticking down, one to the left and one to the right. Now we're gonna draw in our back carbon. And our back carbon has a methyl group sticking down. So there's that methyl group sticking down. And then it has its two hydrogens that are both sticking up, one to the left and one to the right. So there's this Newman projection. In the video when we were looking at the conformations of ethane, we came up with a name for a molecule with a dihedral angle of 60 degrees. We call this the staggered conformation. And remember, we talked about how the staggered conformation with its 60 degree dihedral angle is the most stable or low energy, lowest energy conformation or shape for this particular molecule. So this is the best shape or position for this molecule to take. Now what I want you to do is take your model, so go back to this guy right here, and I want you to twist around the carbon-carbon bond where we're focusing for our Newman projection. I want you to twist it so that it becomes in an eclipsed shape. So you're gonna take this model and you are just simply going to rotate this carbon-carbon bond 60 degrees, either clockwise or counterclockwise, it won't matter. And let's draw what you get when you do that rotation. Now, if you're feeling a little bit lost with this, you might wanna go back and watch the video on the eclipsed conformation of ethane, because that's where we went over how to draw the other conformations. So in the eclipsed conformation, because we can't draw the atoms literally hiding one right behind the other, we offset the, the bonds to the back carbon. If we are only rotating the front carbon, or excuse me, only rotating the back carbon, the front carbon is going to keep all of its hydrogens pointing in the exact same position. And then you rotated the back carbon, so this CH3 group, you either rotated it counterclockwise or clockwise, this doesn't really matter which way you rotated it. Let's say you rotated it clockwise, so the CH3 group is now over there, the hydrogen is here, the other hydrogen is right here. You might be saying, oh, wait a minute, I actually drew something that looks different. I drew, uh, let's say you drew this. That Those two structures are exactly the same because we're still showing two hydrogens eclipsing each other, and we're showing a hydrogen and a methyl eclipsing each other. Or maybe you're saying, wait a minute, when I did this, I had my methyl in a totally different position. Like maybe you had your methyl up here. Again, this is all the same. All of these representations are showing the same thing. And if you physically take your piece of paper and turn your piece of paper, uh, one way or another, you'll be able to turn your piece of paper so that it matches one of these structures. So um, let's talk again about this eclipsed structure. We talked about how in the eclipsed structure, the dihedral angle is zero degrees, even though we don't draw it zero degrees because we can't draw a zero degree angle. Um, this is the eclipsed conformation. This is the least stable and the highest energy conformation for any molecule. And we talked about the explanation behind the instability is this area, particularly this area right here, where we have what we call steric hindrance which in a really simple explanation for steric hindrance is that we have atoms that are crowding each other. 
um, in each other's space. Remember that the outside surface of an atom, if we're thinking about just an atom, and this kind of looks like a Newman projection, the nucleus is the positively charged portion of the atom, and the outside surface of the atom is where all the electrons reside. So the outer surface of any atom is negatively charged, even if it's not an anion. So when you get a lot of atoms coming close together in close contact with each other, you have their negative surfaces interacting with each other and if they get too close that that negative to negative interaction is high energy it's unstable so what we have in the eclipsed confirmation is crowding or atoms getting too close together which creates an unstable situation